So welcome to Pure Math 030. This is an exercise on finding equations of reflected functions. So in the previous lesson, lessons, we looked at the three types of reflections we cover and what they look like and how they're formed. But now we're going to move on to some algebra where we find the equations of specific functions given certain reflections. So first off, if we were given the function f at x is equal to 3x minus 5, we want to find equations of the following. So first off, y is equal to negative f at x, which you will recognize as being a reflection in the x-axis. And then we'll go after y is equal to f at negative x, which you will recognize, I hope, as a reflection in the y-axis. And then x equal f at y, which I hope you identify as a reflection in the line y equal x, or an inverse. So determine y is equal to negative f at x. Well, the first one we had, uh, the equation was f at x is equal to 3x minus 5. Now, I'm going to show you two ways that we can go after these. And um, you will have to decide what works best for you. I will tell you what I prefer. And I'll first off call this one method 1. And the way that we do it is we start with the original graph, f at x is equal to 3x minus 5. And we simply express this one as our new graph, y is equal to negative 3x minus 5 and then you can simplify it by distributing the negative through. So y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. Done. So really all you did was multiply everything by negative 1. Now that's a good method. In fact, most people prefer that. But there are some advantages to this method too in that it reinforces certain properties of transfer, uh, transformations. And for method two, I'm going to recall that when you are reflecting in the x-axis, you replace the y value with negative y. And then you take the equation. Now, the original equation was y is equal to 3x minus 5 we would then write it as negative y is equal to 3x minus 5. And to isolate the y, you would then divide both terms by negative 1. So y is equal to negative 3x, and then the negative 5 divided by negative 1 would give you plus 5. So you get the same answer. So method 1 is the more conventional, but method 2 is useful because it shows how we determine um, or find um, reflections in the x-axis. Now question number two, y is equal to f at negative x. This is actually easier because all we need to do is go into the equation. I'm going to write it like this, y is equal to f at negative x, sort of a three-pronged equation. And I would write this as three times negative x minus 5. So I just replace the x with negative x and then simplify away. And this will give me y is equal to negative 3x minus 5. Okay, so there we go. Now, that would be a reflection in the y-axis. So if you were to graph this one, you would see that it would be a mirror image around y. x equal f at y, you would have probably done these in 20. But if we started with the original, y is equal to 3x minus 5. So I'll write it in terms of y, which I, I find works better instead, instead of f at x. And we simply switch x and y. And in doing so, we will get x is equal to 3y minus 5. And then we isolate the new y. 
So x plus 5 is equal to 3y. And then divide by 3. So you could either write this one as x plus 5 over 3. Or you could take this one and write it individually as y is equal to x over 3 plus 5 over 3. And by the way, these will often be expressed using that inverse notation, f inverse at x is equal to x over 3 plus 5 over 3. But that is optional. That's the way I'm going to write it, though. Let's go through a more complicated example of this. So given this function, y is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 3, um, let's see what we can do with this one. So the first question is to get the equation of these. y is equal to negative f at x. So I'm going to use the second method, which is to replace y with negative y to reinforce that step. So negative y is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 3. And then when you divide by negative 1, you'll get negative x minus 2 squared minus 3. So you have to make sure you divide both terms by negative 1. And then you've got it. Let's take a look at the next one. Same equation, but now, oops y is equal to f at negative x. So we go into the equation and everywhere we see an x we replace it with negative x. So negative x minus 2 squared plus 3. Now that's okay but some of you will recognize that you may want to factor out this negative and write it like this. And we will be doing more like this later because this turns into a big deal when we combine them. But if you were to square that negative, you would then get the negative that's been factored out. You'd get x plus 2 squared plus 3. So that's interesting, the, the choices. For now, I would say that this is good enough, but you will see some variety in the way answers are expressed. But when you have a reflection in the y-axis, you just replace x with negative x. The next one is the inverse. So if we started off with y is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 3, we as always switch the x and the y. So x is equal to y minus 2 squared plus 3. And this is a little tricky. We've got to get that x, that, that uh, new y by itself. So we, we do some algebra, bring the 3 over. So x minus 3 is equal to y minus 2 squared. And then we have to take the square root of both sides. And don't forget, when you take the square root, you've got to go plus or minus x minus 3. And that's equal to y minus 2. And then finally, to get the y by itself, and I'm going to take the y to the left, I'll write it like this, or just rewrite it with the y on the left, plus or minus x minus 3. And then that 2 would be added on. So you notice it's a very different looking equation, but that would be the inverse of the original graph. 
So that's how these ones go. Um, and the next lesson will show some more, but we will start combining all these operations together.